You're under a tight deadline. You need to get to work immediately on this project. So you decide to skip the pre-planning process. You might think that's a good idea, right? Not at all. You absolutely need to pre-plan your production in as much detail as you possibly can and communicate that to the client and your other team members. This also provides a way to have your clients sign off on the pre-planning portion of your production. One typical technique for pre-planning is called storyboarding. This comes from the film and feature animation industry. Essentially, a storyboard is a series of panels put together to create a graphical description of what your final production will look like. Storyboarding provides a visualization of the story you are telling in your production. The storyboard is usually created in sketch format. It can be very detailed color drawings, a series of watercolor paintings, or it can be extremely simple and look like a series of stick figure sketches. You'll need to determine what's going to work best for both you and your client for the particular production you're working on. The most important thing is that you do not skip this step in the process. The level of detail that goes into the storyboard is again dependent on how well you know the client, how well they trust you, whether or not you've done this type of work before, and how complex the production is going to be. One level of detail in the storyboarding process might be a couple of sketches of keyframe information. Essentially, you'll describe in visual format what happens in each scene and in what sequence. You'll learn some of the terminology as we get a little further into the process. You may also have other information within a storyboard frame. You may have camera information, color and material information in the storyboard panel. You may have cues for animations within each storyboard panel. Is an object going to rotate a little bit at some point? It's these sorts of things that you'll need to determine whether or not they need to be in the storyboard. Keep in mind, do not skip on information that will help communicate your idea to your client. Another very important aspect to understand at the very beginning of the pre-planning process is how you will output your final result. Will the final product go to video? Will it go to still images for print or web? If you're going out to print or web, you need to know the file type and you need to know the resolution. Very high resolution images can take a very long time to render. So you need to know ahead of time if you need a high resolution image. If you're going out to animation, you add more complexity to the process of output. So it becomes even more important to understand the process. One option for animations is the codec or compressor decompressor. The codec handles the compression of still images into a single animation file. You need to understand whether or not your client has the ability to read the file that you create and whether the quality is high enough for your needs. Are you going to the web for a small animation or are you going to do high resolution animation for high definition video? All of these aspects need to be evaluated and agreed upon before you start any content creation for your production. Keep in mind, do not skip the pre-planning stage but make it an appropriate level of detail for the size and scope of your animation production. Remember, the storyboarding process provides a visual outline that gives you a way of communicating your idea to your client. In some cases, for simple productions, say two or three minute animations, a text outline may be enough to get across the information you need to communicate. I like to use mind mapping software. This is a very good outline tool. Or you can use Word to create an outline. However, the best way to communicate is through the use of sketches. There are a lot of tools out there that allow you to create two-dimensional sketches. 
One very useful tool is Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. A lot of these tools provide features like pen and pencil, magic marker, colored crayon. One of the important features that you want to look for is the ability to create layers so that you can put your base sketch elements on one layer, camera information on another, animation information on another, etc., etc. This allows you to build the storyboard and easily change elements. Now, this is a simple sketch. The storyboard here is made up of four panels, starting with the one on the upper left and moving into panel two, then to panel three, and finally over to panel four. This shows the flow of the final production. This will be an animation about some objects in the laboratory. Notice that we have notes on camera moves and other information, but this is a simple storyboard that we're going to use for this 3D production. Open 3ds Max if you don't already have it open. We're going to use 3ds Max as a file viewer to take a look at the JPEG file of our storyboard. We're going to use an option from the Utilities tab of the ribbon. Go ahead and click on Utilities, then click on Asset Browser. The Asset Browser allows you to look for 3ds Max and image files in a more visual way. When the browser opens, you will see a notice. That's a basic copyright notice. Click OK to close the pop-up. Navigate to the Scene Assets directory in the 3D Production Project directory, then to the Images directory. In the Images directory, you'll see a file called storyboard underscore panel one dot JPEG. Double click on that file to load the image. Your view may not look exactly like mine, and we may have to navigate around a little bit in order to see everything. Just let me resize the viewer a bit. There we go. What we're looking at now is storyboard number one. There's a fair amount of information that we see. It's a long shot of an exterior scene. We have the description of the sun location for lighting, a description of the camera location, and we have a description of what the camera is going to do. In this case, it's going to start from one viewpoint and end up at street level looking down the street. In this case, we need minimum building detail because we're a long way out and we're not really going to see all the detail. Why do we want to have minimum scene detail? For one reason, render time. Remember, the less detail, the faster the render time. And since we have no need for high resolution models, since we're not getting very close, there's no need to put them in. All this would do is increase our render time and the complexity of our scene for no reason. Close the image viewer. Double click on storyboard panel 2.jpg to open it. If you need to adjust the size of the viewer, go ahead. Here we see a close-up of the exterior of one of the buildings on the street. So we've gone from the outdoor scene far away from this little town to a completely different 3ds Max scene, which is the front view of this building. Again, we're maintaining flexibility and we're optimizing our workflow in creating our scenes because we don't have to have any extra detail in the close-up scene that we don't see. We don't need other buildings or streets, not even the landscape. You'll notice that we have some information on color and different materials, as well as other pertinent information. Close the image viewer. Double click on storyboard panel 3.jpg to open it. Again, if you need to adjust the size of the viewer, go ahead. You'll see that we're now in an interior scene. You'll notice that there's not much detail here. We're just going to have the camera in this scene to give us an establishing shot of the interior space and what it looks like. An establishing shot gives the viewer an overview of where they are. Without it, switching scenes can sometimes be a little confusing, especially going from outside to inside. Once again, close the image viewer. 
and double click on storyboard panel 4.jpg to open it. Adjust the size of the viewer if you need to. In this panel, we have a different interior scene. A similar room, but the lighting is a little different, and there are some different details. The scene gives us a little more information about what we're going to render, and a little bit about the animation that we're going to have for elements in the scene. This storyboard gives us the kind of information that we're going to need to present to the client and ask them, is this going to be acceptable for the animation you're looking for? We're going to use this storyboard as the graphical description for our 3D production final animation.